our channel Anything Medicine. So today we are continuing with the coronaviruses, the corona family. After we have done already uh, the RNA scheme, the general scheme of RNA viruses. So the corona viruses. Actually, this family divided into two subgroups, which are which which are enteric viruses and renal viruses. So let's compare between these two viruses. Actually, renal viruses is spread through the droplet, while enteric viruses spread fecal oral route by fecal oral route. And the infection, the infection of renal virus actually is local and superficial, while enteric viruses deep and systemic. And immunity because. Uh, renal virus infection is local and super, superficial and do not penetrate the body so after relieving of this uh, disease there will be no post infection or no post disease immunity so you can have the infection more and more and more so you can have recurrent infection from the same type of viruses and family during uh, your life but from enteric viruses you will not have just once because there will be post infection immunity and the character of infection if we compare both the renal virus will be a short duration disease and short uh, incubation period and self limited disease these are characters of uh, renal viruses while exactly opposite for enteric viruses more long duration and more uh, incubation period and it's not self-limited actually we have to fight it that's why we are studying medicine so enteric viruses let's go to enteric viruses enteric viruses actually divide again into Kuksaki virus and enteroviruses and belong enteroviruses there is poliovirus and echovirus and enterovirus uh, like number 67 till 71 and hibarna virus hibarna virus actually have just one virus which is hepatitis A we'll be talking about all hepatitis viruses in one video and so let's start with polio virus first of all let's, let's we already said that it's poli viruses belong to enteric viruses so it's spread fecal oral route spread by fecal oral route so the virus will enter with the food or contaminated food uh, through the mouth and there it will replicate inside the pharynx it's called primary multiplication site primary multiplication site Mul multiplication here in nasopharynx then after this process the virus will proceed to the stomach and the difference between enteric virus or enteric viruses and rhinovirus that the enteric viruses are acid resistant so this virus will not be dying stomach acid resistant and bile resistant and actually enzyme resistant so these are the features that allow this virus to proceed into intestine and it's enzyme enzyme resistance so actually finally due to these characters the virus due to these features the virus can proceed to the intestine where it will proliferate in the uh, lymph in the lymphatic tissues which are in the intestine and through this lymphatic we know that intestine is rich with lymphatic tissues and through these lymphatic tissues the virus finally will 
travel to the blood, we know that the lymphatic drainage finally ends with blood. And so the virus will go finally through hematogenous way to the spinal cord. And there in spinal cord, we know that poliovirus, it makes paralysis because it loves to infect the anterior cells, the anterior cells of the, uh, like, the anterior, the, the cells of anterior horn, the motor cells of anterior horn. These cells, we know that it control, what is this? We know that these cells control muscles. So, actually, what, what will result? Finally. Finally, we'll see descending asymmetric paralysis, which is more prominent in proximal muscles, more than distance. So distal muscles paralyze uh, late, lately. So we'll see a child like that. We call it tripod position. So we'll see a child like that with proximal uh, paralysis and distal function, functional uh, muscles. So, this is the pathogenesis, briefly. And let's note that the polio virus, the polio virus, use a receptor called, use a receptor called 155CD. So this receptor can be asked in many exams. And um, so there are three uh, there are six, three subtypes for uh, polio virus. We'll talk about it in the next part. Moving on to the next part. Now we already done with uh, pathogenesis of polio virus, and now let's mention that polio virus have also three serotypes: one and two and three. And it's already, uh, it's already like we get rid of these two strains. Like last time was reported these two strains like more than 10 years ago, last time was reported. So we still have some cases of strain one. And it's most common wild cases now. So actually we have four stages of polio uh, disease. First stage is asymptomatic and it's the most common stage. Um, so the, in this stage, just there will be no symptoms and the virus will replicate in the tonsils and that's it. And may stop up to this. And the second stage, it's abortive, called abortive, and it's less common. In this stage, the virus will proceed to the intestine and replicate there and trans, uh, uh, transfer, transfer to the blood where it will stop there. And third stage is non-paralytic where the virus will make uh, there will be no paralysis from the nail, so voice and there will be meningitis, aseptic meningitis. And of course it's less common. And the less and less common, it's paralytic and it's more dangerous, the most dangerous, yes? And it's irreversible. And we have explained during the pathogenesis how the paralysis can occur. Um, um, so, we already said the character of paralysis, let's repeat it. It's descending asymmetric, uh, asymmetrical paralysis. Which, more prominent, which is more prominent on the proximal muscle, not distal. And there will be shown a uh, um, tripod sign, we, we say, it, yes, tripod sign. Means the child will come uh, with movable uh, distal uh, parts and paralyzed proximal. So, let's move to the vaccines of polio because it's more important now. 
So we have two types of vaccine. We have oral vaccine and live vaccine. So actually we don't have a treatment for the polio virus, just we can prevent it. So we can prevent it through the vaccines. And we have two types, as we mentioned, yes? Oral and intramuscular. Oral and intramuscular, injectable. So the oral is called Sabine. It's uh, due to the name of the scientists who discovered. And the, the injectable called SOAK. And actually the injectable is killed, killed vaccine. Uh, while the oral is live attenuated vaccine. So how do you remember the killed have K and is the, is the, the letter K is present in the, the name of the scientist who discovered, yes? SOAK. So this is a way to not forget. Now let's say the advantage and disadvantage of each because it's important and it's been asked in many exams. So first, the oral vaccine is more cheaper. Is cheaper. And the oral vaccine actually one of the most prominent uh, advantages that it gives us local immunity because we take it orally and it come in touch with the mucosa of GIT and thus the mucosa of GIT will produce antibody against the vaccine so against the virus while here there is no touching to the mucosa so here just will be I, IgG and IgM antibody while here will be same but plus same but plus IgA. So this oral vaccine prevent the entry of the virus and plus prevent the paralysis. But here don't like after taking this vaccine you will have just immunity against the virus inside blood. So the virus still able to enter your body and replicate in tonsils and in intestine. So this vaccine, the injectable vaccine is not preventable for infection, it's preventable for the paralysis. So this is one of the advantages of oral vaccine. So as we said, oral vaccine, it's fecal oral, yes? So the vaccine will be taken orally and finally, some of the viruses will be excreting out with the feces. So these viruses, which, which, were, which, is, which were originally the vaccine, will be inside the feces and you may contaminate the other so like the virus sp spread the vaccine will spread also so this vaccine is actually spread through fecal oral route so this vaccine can you like by taking this vaccine you may transfer the vaccine to the others through contamination way so it's a great idea when we have the epidemic disease it's a great idea when we have an epidemic disease when you will give just a one someone the the vaccine and you will know that this one or this patient will transfer the vaccine to the others no need to worry second it's actually a disadvantage the stability because it's a live vaccine the stability of the vaccine is less than the killed so it, it should it should be keeping under uh, it should be given under 22 degree of temperature while here you can keep it under any temperature it's more stable and another disadvantage feature for oral, for oral, oral vaccine and this disadvantage led to like led for some countries to th to, to think about shifting to the injectable types such as India now is thinking about to shift to the injectable type vaccine due to this disadvantage which is interferable feature interferable interferable characteristic it means that this oral vaccine uh, due to some other uh, conditions some other conditions can interfere with the vaccine, such as diarrhea, another viral infection. So another viral infection or diarrhea, which 
which can be present in the intestine, if you take this vaccine, oral vaccine, it will be interfering with the vaccine and the vaccine will not be functional. So the vaccine, so, so it will just pass through the intestine and squeeze it out of the feces uh, and that's it. So you might think that you got the vaccine while you're not. So this is a really disadvantage, really a huge disadvantage. Um, so which, which, which conditions that interfere with the vaccine is actually the milk of the mother. So if a child, uh, after feeding from the mother, got the vaccine, it will not be functional. Or another viruses or diarrhea. Diarrhea. Or, as I told you, there is strain 1 and 2 and 3 inside the vaccine. So these strains might interfere with each other. So might you got all of these strains in the vaccine, sure that it, it will be in the vaccine, but you, you might got just 2 and 3, and 1 will be excreted without functioning. So you got the idea, yes? Mm. So we, we, are, we are already done with the vaccines. Let's, now let's shift to another viruses. We already covered the most important uh, points about the polio virus. Now we already said that enteroviruses comprise of polio and echo and intero and hibana. And we said that hibana will discuss it in another videos. Which we, in which we will assemble all the hepatitis uh, viruses. And now let's move on to the echovirus. Actually, echovirus transmitted through the same way uh, of polyvirus and it causes upper respiratory tract infection and aseptic meningitis. Aseptic meningitis is characteristic actually for all viruses, mean there will be no neutrophilic shifting, just slight lymphocytosis. And enterovirus number 67 till, 70, till 71 is actually causing hemorrhagic conjunctivitis. It's here. Because hemorrhagic conjunctivitis shares many viruses, more than one virus. So this virus can cause this disease and it causes pneumonia like pneumonia like so moving on to the next virus of enteric viruses which are Coxsackie actually why, why they divide into two viruses because Coxsackie can kill the suckling mice, while enteroviruses do not kill the suckling mice. Actually, they were in the same family, but they were injecting some of these viruses of this family into suckling mice, and some suckling mice die, and while well, some not. So based on this, they divide into two. So that's why Kuksaki kill the suckling mice, kill the suckling mice. Now, actually Coxsackie divided into A and B. A is more superficially. A infect mostly the epithelial cells, infect mostly the skin, as we say, it's superficially. So it likes to infect epithelial cells, epithelial cells, while B likes to infect internal organ internal organ now based on this A is associated with herpangina disease hand foot mouth disease hand foot mouth syndrome and hemorrhagic conjunctivitis all these are diseases which are implemented to the epithelial tissues now B virus, based on the, this character which we say, it, it loves to infect internal organs, it causes neonatal meningitis, I hope it's clear for you, it causes neonatal meningitis and pericarditis and 
epidemic myalgia and it causes devil grip why, why they call it like that? because it causes infection uh, and inflammation in the parietal pleura so the patient cannot even breathe it will, it will, he will be holding his breath so that's why they call it devil grip like someone is holding him, forcing him to hold the breath and it can cause pancreatitis and eventually if you know due to pancreatitis and mostly these uh, infections will be um, for childs so, or congenital actually it can transfer from the mother to the child and thus the child will have juvenile pancreatitis and juvenile diabetes so one of the causes of juvenile diabetes juvenile diabetes one of the causes of juvenile diabetes is Coxsackie B now we covered all the, the coronaviruses, the most important uh, points hope you got the benefit, thank you